Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Washington. On Thursday evening, five police officers were shot and killed and six others wounded in Dallas, Texas, during a protest against the killing of two black men by police this week. The Dallas shootings followed two fatal police encounters in the previous two days. On Wednesday, Philando Castile was shot in his car at a traffic stop by a police officer. A day before, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, two police officers pinned Alston Sterling to the ground and shot him dead. All this news has caused Democrats on Capitol Hill to rally around the issue of gun control. But is that a distraction from looking at the real issue? Now joining us to discuss all of this is our guest, Glenn Ford. Glenn is the co-founder and executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. And of course, he's a regular contributor to The Real News. Thanks so much for being with us, Glenn. Thanks for the opportunity. So, Glenn, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, they had a press conference today where they were addressing the issue of gun control. After all this news this week, they chose to really focus on gun control. What's your reaction to that? And do you see it as a red herring? Well, I think the first thing that needs to be said about that press conference and its composition, that is, uh, the Black Caucus members uh, who attended, is, is to say that only one of them, only John Conyers, uh, two years ago, voted for the Grayson Amendment, which would have uh, halted the Pentagon's transfers of military weapons and vehicles and gear to local police departments. Uh, all the rest of those congresspersons who were present at that uh, press conference voted to continue uh, the militarization of the local police. Uh, and uh, that, in fact, 80 percent of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, did so. Uh, in terms of, of the caucus's stand uh, on gun control, you know, the reality is that gun laws are almost irrelevant as far as the police are concerned in black America. Uh, in terms of their practice, uh, any black person who is suspected of carrying a gun, uh, no matter what the laws of the state say, uh, is liable to be treated as if they are guilty of a capital crime. And we see that in terms of the two uh, uh, horrific uh, murders that occurred this week uh, in Minnesota, which has rather stricter uh, gun laws. Uh, the, <laughs> the victim uh, was killed after announcing uh, that he was carrying a weapon which was lawful and that he had papers to prove it. Uh, he was executed. In Louisiana, uh, the victim uh, was probably not authorized to carry the weapon that the police claim he had in his pocket, but he wasn't brandishing it against anybody, and that's plain to see uh, in the video. Uh, but he uh, was executed. A very different laws in Louisiana and Minnesota, but the police uh, treat a black person suspected of having a gun the same way uh, as a marked person, a person marked for execution. Glenn, I want to talk more about black the black leadership on Capitol Hill. I, we've had you on many times, and, and you've really talked about how they have actually contributed to this culture of violence that we are seeing um, against black people and, and not holding police accountable, and if anything, giving them force to, to hammer on um, communities of color even more so. Can you speak to specific laws and um, how they've been able to do just that? Sure. In addition to 80 percent of them voting uh, against the Grayson uh, Amendment, half of the Congressional Black Caucus in 1986 voted for those racist uh, crack cocaine 100 to 1 uh, punishment uh, laws. Uh, more than half of the Congressional Black Caucus voted for uh, the uh, criminal justice, the crime control uh, legislation uh, back in 1993 that Hillary Clinton uh, and her husband are catching hell for, uh, deservedly, uh, today. Uh, the legislation that led to uh, the largest influx of black bodies into pr prison uh, under uh, any president presidency in the United States. Well, half of the Black Caucus uh, went along with that. And here today, or rather th this latest press conference, we see uh, G.K. Butterfield, the current uh, chairman of the caucus, who's about the most right-wing member of the caucus, by the way. We see him uh, throwing around the word terror uh, when talking about uh, the shooting that occurred in Dallas. Uh, th this is the most 
the most irresponsible thing uh, that one uh, could do. Uh, when you invoke the word terror in the United States, you're not just uh, making a rhetorical statement. You're not just uh, making an emotional outburst. The word terror has legal ramifications in the United States. Uh, if the U.S. government were to classify uh, actions as uh, Mr. Micah Johnson uh, took, uh, apparently, uh, in, in Dallas as terror, uh, then uh, the associates, uh, all the friends of Micah Johnson uh, could be liable for prosecution, certainly the deepest investigation uh, on charges of giving aid and comfort uh, to terrorists. Peace groups uh, have uh, been prosecuted uh, for trying to a, a, arrange truces uh, between uh, various factions uh, and uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, groups that were trying to uh, uh, tone down the violence have been prosecuted because you can't talk to terrorists. So, so he, this, this black congressman is injecting uh, a very dangerous word into this debate, uh, especially because, as all black folks know, uh, any law uh, on the books will be super prosecuted uh, in terms of the, its use against black folks. And now he wants to uh, pin this terrorist uh, label on black people. If we wanted to see real change and real leadership from the Congressional Black Caucus, what should they be advocating for? What type of legislation? What should people themselves be pressuring their own representatives to be doing there on Capitol Hill? You know, we don't even have to get into legislation. Uh, they are Democrats, and black people make up 25 percent of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party can't win without black people. They can't be a Democratic president without black people. Uh, and yet we have an executive branch under a Democratic president, a black Democratic president, uh, who, who believes that it is impossible uh, to charge a, a police officer uh, with, with murder uh, unless we have video uh, that, that shows him uh, guilty in, in, in ways that even a five-year-old child uh, could, could decide. Uh, so, so, so the political pressure that the Congressional Black Caucus, which calls itself the conscience of the Congress, could bring uh, against its own party's president or presidential nominee uh, would be a greatly helpful uh, in changing uh, the, the stance and posture of a U.S. Justice Department that won't touch prosecutions of cops with a 10-foot pole. All right, Glenn, always a pleasure having you on. I love hearing your opinion. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.